There's a ton of good camera tracking tutorials on YouTube, but little is told on how to film, what camera settings to use, and most important of all, how to avoid these big mistakes. One mistake I made actually cost me four hours to repair, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. We were filming a Mario movie that day, and when we got back to the office, I tried to camera track the shot in Blender, and you guessed it, it doesn't work. So I painstakingly worked for the next three and a half hours to try and set this right, to get the camera track to work, but it didn't. So I had to go back on a different day with similar weather conditions to film the same shot, but this time avoiding my previous mistake. Mistake number one is motion blur in your footage. In the case of the Mario footage, there were several frames with heavy motion blur, which means that the picture is all smudged out. Now this is very hard for the computer to track because your image looks very different in the next frame than it did in the previous frame because of the motion blur. So we want to eliminate the motion blur and we can do that on the camera by increasing the shutter speed. Now when you do this, you actually remove your motion blur and your footage may seem unnatural. You actually have to reintroduce the motion blur in post-production. But that aside, it's so much easier to have a track without motion blur than trying to fix one with motion blur. So on the camera, we are going to increase the shutter speed. Note that it does become darker when we do this because there's less time for the shutter to open and close and thus less light is being recorded. And in order to fix our light values, we can always open up the aperture a little bit more or increase the ISO. But be careful with the ISO as it is prone to increase the grain. Mistake number two, filming something untrackable. Now, what do I mean with filming something untrackable? There's four types. Not enough perspective for an accurate track, low light conditions, lack of high contrast areas, and people walking through the frame or other obstructions. One of the most important things to get right with camera tracking is making sure that you already have a shot that's trackable at all. So first of all, let's understand what tracking actually is. We have 2D tracking, 2.5D tracking, and 3D tracking. A 2D track is for X and Y motion. If you have something that doesn't change perspective a lot, then you can use a 2D track in the form of a single point tracker to stick to your finger, for example. 2.5D track is used to track flat surfaces. I use this technique in my Star Wars VFX breakdown while holding two paper sheets where I can show a video simply by using a 2.5D tracker and placing some footage within it. The paper, of course, is actually just a white paper with tracking markers on them. A 3D track is used when the perspective of objects in your footage shifts and we need to composite elements in there with the same type of dimensionality. So another problem is low light conditions. When you have too much darkness or too much lightness in your footage, then there's probably not enough data to get a decent track at all. Always make sure to have enough light, but also make sure not to have it overexposed as well. With high contrast areas, I mean that you need to have trackable points that are clearly defined. So what do I mean when I say you need to have the right perspective for your camera shot? Do these three things and everything will be fine. Number one, preferably film the floor but also the wall. And with wall I also mean objects scattered throughout the scene. And if you need proof of whether this works or not, just watch everybody who made the camera tracking tutorial and notice that each one of them has a floor. Number two, make sure there's the possibility of at least eight trackable areas in your shot. The camera tracking algorithm needs eight trackers to function, so we actually always need to look with our eyes already in the scene. Is there a high contrast point over there? If not, can I place an object over there? Or can we move a little bit to the side so we have areas that are trackable at all? So that's important. Three save your camera information if you're going to do a camera track shot make sure to take a picture with your phone of your camera screen so that you have all the settings right there but also of the lens on top so you know at which millimeter your focal length should be afterwards in blender another mistake i've made is not planning out your shots planning alleviates a lot of the problems laying down the road ahead and especially in camera tracking because if you pick up the camera track the movie might not work out anymore as intended to be. I've made the mistake of wanting to track something in a windy forest, but as we all know, the wind rustles the leaves and all the leaves move, and this results in a sort of micro jitter, which makes the tracking very unreliable because everything in your shot is moving around. The same goes for filming seawater. You can't just camera track seawater, it's constantly moving. Another big mistake is having a person cross in front of the footage without there being enough reliable tracking markers left. So if a person moves too closely to the screen, we lose a lot of tracking data. And this tracking data might be useful for the computer to understand where the object is supposed to be placed. So take these lessons and make sure not to waste your time like I did. For the final bit, let's hop into Blender for some actual tracking. 
first of all, we have a beautiful trackable shot here. And you do as well, because you are smart and you have watched the previous part of the video and you went about preparing for that shot professionally and intelligently. But just in case you made mistakes and have a hard time fixing a track that almost seems impossible, I might have a solution for you at the end of this video. But first the basics, and we'll go through this fast. You can place tracks yourself by holding control and clicking. Pressing Alt S makes an area in which the tracker will search for the same point in the next frame. You can also click detect features and Blender does the work for you, oftentimes accurately enough. Normalize makes sure slight light differences occurring during the shot are ignored, so they don't mess up your track. Under motion model, I find a fine to work best in most cases, but I always try location, rotation and scale first, because it's a little less taxing. The difference between a fine and lock rod scale is that a fine assumes perspective shift in the trackers, while lock rod scale does not. You can choose the perspective option if your camera is free flowing instead of in a controlled shot. Single point and planar tracking I do in DaVinci Resolve. Now press Ctrl T to track forward and press Ctrl Shift T to track backwards. Sometimes you need to detect features at multiple parts of the video to make it work. Under the track tab on the right, we find camera. And when we press on the three arrows, we can search for our camera. I use a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, so I'll click on that one. It adjusts the sensor size to the right size. And these are camera specific. Then for the focal length, luckily we've got our picture of the top of our lens, as discussed earlier. And this is basically your focal length in millimeters. And this should be enough for your track to work out. Go to the Solve tab, press keyframes, unless you use the tripod, panning motion, then pick tripod and solve the camera. I found the best solves to be at around 0.3 pixel solve error, and we can get away with a little more if we film with 4K, because it's four times more pixels in the same area size, technically. Sometimes a solve error of 0.5 to 0.6 works out as well. So the final part is to clean up some tracks that are bad. First, look for outliers. These tracks have gone haywire, and we need to dispose of them. If that doesn't work, we use cleanup, clean tracks, and increase the reprojection error to a higher number. Everything below that number will stay. The rest can be deleted. And now congratulations with your camera tracked footage. If you're still having trouble with your track, I might have a solution. It's a tried and true method that has proved useful countless of times in history. Manual tracking. A computer, presumably, is dumber than you because a computer just does what it does and you can actually understand what you do. So when a computer messes up your track, you have to go in there and do everything by hand. So in this case, that would mean that you'd have to go through your entire footage, frame by frame, moving the camera tracker and doing that eight times so that you have eight tracks. I know, it's a lot of work, but it might be the only way to fix your shot. Good luck, soldier. And if you want to know how I made wanted VFX in Blender, I highly recommend watching this video next.